our Facebook page and um, uh, you know following on Instagram and those kind of things. So uh, it really does help uh, the following. Remember, you can go to trainingbydunbar.com and look at YouTube videos that I have. I have them there as well. I also have, if, you, if you're looking to get the book, you can go to the website and get the book. If you want to book a free consultation with me, you can go to the website and book a free consultation as well. So most of everything you can get from me is right on my website. That's probably the cleanest place to go to get it. I know that social media can be kind of uh, junky. So sometimes it's hard to, to, to find information there, links and things like that. So uh, I also have my website set up where uh, probably in the next week or so, you'll be able to go there to 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 get into the zoom you'll be able to go right to my page and just click and get into the zoom that way so mm -hmm. you're not looking for the link in other places as well uh, of course this is the the book network marketing as an entrepreneur we got about six days left until that book is released thank you guys for all all who who, who have pre-ordered uh remember if you're still looking to pre-order you can get it at a 25 percent discount right now there's a 25 percent discount all you need to do is um Go to the Become an Entrepreneur page or go to my regular page. Any place that I post, you'll see a link there that'll talk about getting the third chapter free and get the 25% discount. And it'll walk you right through the process. But the code is, if you ever just go to buy the book and you don't go through that process, the code is employeepreneur with a dash in between employee and preneur. So let me go ahead and drop that real quick in the chat. Oh, good. Yeah, that way you guys will. And it's all caps. So it's all caps if you hit caps on the computer. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So that is the code when you go to buy the book. If you put that in, when it asks for a code, it will give you a 25% discount uh, on the book. So appreciate you guys all uh, for that as well, for, for getting involved with that there. So what else we got here? Chapter four, which is going to be Tiffany Sullivan's chapter, talking about forming a company, structuring the company, uh, your tax liability, all those things. So for those that are looking to structure their business uh, to, to operate through um, your network marketing company as a realtor, because I know realtors the same thing. I know a lot of realtors who operate in their name, and then I know some realtors who operate on their business name. So that's important to understand that you should always do, be doing business as a business structure so that you don't get sued personally. Uh, and, and of course, Tiffany Sullivan will talk a lot more uh, about that uh, you know, in the book, but that's, that's it's really important. So the book is uh, $4.97. Remember, get that 25% discount with that code you see right there. Book release is 10.5. And chapter three is available. So for those who have not seen chapter three or have got, not gotten it, please just text me, email me, something like that, whatever. Just contact me. I will get that third chapter to you uh, so you can take a look at it and kind of see how that's written. And thank you guys who have given me feedback on that chapter. For those who have read the chapter and haven't given me any feedback, uh, please give me some feedback on the chapter so I'll know as I continue to write more things, uh, things that I can change. Uh, because I'm not writing the books really particularly for me, right? I'm writing it for uh, an audience. So it's important for the, for the audience to give me uh, some feedback on those different things. And um, keep in mind, when you subscribe on YouTube, if you hit the notification bell, every time I drop a training, normally Mondays and Wednesdays when I drop a training, you'll get a notification letting you know that I dropped the training. You can look at it whenever you want, but you'll get that uh, notification on tomorrow and is it tomorrow. Yeah, the first on the first and on the third, there will be two videos being released uh, that I have set to release on the first and the third. Uh, for those who have, may have missed those videos, so they'll be there for you to take a look at. So let's look at entrepreneur education, enhance your online presence, part two, branding. Uh, so we're talking about becoming an entrepreneur and you are your own brand. Now, look, you don't have to brand yourself. We're just talking about that today, particularly. Some people don't want to brand themselves. There's a lot of authors that are ghost writers where mm -hmm. the name that they use on their books is not even their actual name. So if you don't want to brand yourself, you don't have to, to be successful. Just so you guys know that uh, up front, I'm certainly not saying that if you don't brand yourself, that you can't be successful. That's just one form of branding. And we're going to talk about several forms of branding, you know, throughout this, this series that we're doing here, because I want you guys to get more involved in selling yourself as opposed to 
uh, selling for somebody else or calling yourself an independent person or I work for myself, right? So you're a realtor and you're saying I'm self-employed, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a business owner, but you're working for Watson Realty. And you got Watson Realty sticker on the side of your vehicle and that's the office that you're going to every day. And there's nothing wrong with working for Watson. All I'm saying is it is what it is, right? If I'm an employee somewhere, then that's just what I am. I'm an employee. I can't be an employee and say that I'm a business owner because that's not true. There's nothing wrong with being an employee. There's nothing wrong with being a business owner. But call it what it is. If you work for Watson Realty as a 1099, you're self-employed because you're employed, right? But you know, for yourself, but you're not a business owner. If you're a realtor selling property in your name and your license is hanging in, in Watson Realty's office, you're not a you're not an entrepreneur, you're not a business owner. So I hope that makes sense to people. Getting a license to sell real estate and then selling the real estate in your name, you don't own a business if you don't have a business structure for one. So you're not really a business owner. Really, really what you're doing is you're buying and selling property in your name. So you're a salesperson, you're a salesman or you're a saleswoman. And again, it's nothing wrong with that, but just know that that's what your status is so that you don't fool yourself into thinking that it's something else. So uh, you see the guy on his shirt, he says, look, you are your own brand. And I used um, uh, Kevin Mack, for those who know Kevin Mack and, and Bertram Calhoun on the left-hand side. And I got some other examples I'm gonna pull up here. Uh, and then I, I put um, uh, Nakia Jones Mack on the other side. Why? Because they branded themselves, even though they're part of another deal. And I want you guys to understand that you can be selling or uh, 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 selling real uh, uh, real estate for Watson and still brand yourself. So I've got a friend of mine here in the Northeast Florida area, a young lady. She's a realtor. Her name is uh, Stevie Hahn. Um, and Stevie Hahn has a really big name. She sells really uh, elaborate houses. She's always on Instagram. She's always on TikTok. She's always on Facebook. She sells real real estate for Exit Realty. She works for Exit Realty. But you wouldn't know that if you if you if you didn't really know her because all of her she has her own logo. Everything is Stevie Hahn. She's got masks. She's got hats. She's got shirts. She's got keychains. She's got all kind of stuff with all of her logos on there. And, and, and it's all Stevie Hahn, realtor. But she works for a bigger brand name, which is Exit Realty. So she's a business owner, even though she works under a bigger branch. The same way that they're so so if you look at on the left hand side of the um of that of that that monitor in this picture, you see. Uh, for those who know who that is, you see Bertram Calhoun and you see Kevin Mack. Well, if you saw the advertising I've been doing all before this training, you will see where they call themselves Fire and Ice. They have branded themselves as Fire and Ice as they tour throughout the country. They're in network marketing. They're in Legal Shield. They're, they, 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 they're under a bigger brand. So they're under two brands. They're under Legal Shield. And then they're under the brand of Team New Vision. And then they have their own brand, which is Fire and Ice. And why is that? Because Bertram Calhoun is really excited. He's really, he, you know, he talks with his hands. He trains with his body. And Kevin Mack is, he's slow. He's very slow talking. He's very <laughs> meticulous when he trains. They call him the mad scientist. So they've got two, two different training styles, but together they train very well. And they even have a website uh, that they have together. And if you look at the flyer that I've been putting out there, if you click on the flyer, the flyer has the website right on there. You can go there and get multi-level marketing training from this from these two. Multi-level marketing training. And they work together so well, but they branded themselves and they both are business owners. So Kevin Mack is not in his network marketing company which is legal shield as kevin mack he i believe he's under allied investment groups so he's he's formed a company joined the network marketing uh, uh um, organization and then created mlm success.com where he can promote training in multi-level marketing and him and bertram calhoun have created fire and ice where they can actually work together and everything is done uh, in a way, right? When I show you like a couple of logos, you'll see how they're gonna you're gonna see logos and fonts 
and color palettes and mantras and catchphrases. And we're going to talk about all those things because that is what makes people familiar with you. But you want to brand things where it has sometimes, not all the time, sometimes where it has to do with your personality, your style, things of that nature. So in their sense, Fire and Ice, their brand is their personality and their style. So the fire of Fire and Ice, which is Bertram Calhoun, is his personality. He's got a fire personality. And um, Kevin Mack has an ice personality. So their branding is based on their personality and style. The color in their logo is based on the color of fire and the color of ice. The texture of fire is the texture of fire. So when you look at the logo, you will see fire has got a fire texture and ice has an ice texture. So a lot of times we're not breaking these things down when we're saying logos, but when you when you see that, that is psychological. And that's how you brand yourself so people continue to see you over and over and over again. And it, it, it gets into their mind. And now they're following you if they like your content, whether it be on Instagram, it doesn't matter where you're at. A person can follow you if 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 you if you branded yourself correctly, right? Does that make sense? Yes. And Patricia Bowman, I see that you said to send that. I'm probably not going to be able to pull your email from there and do it that way. So if you can just email me or text me, that would be great. Let me put my number down here just so you guys will have it. So I want to make sure I have that there. That's my number. And my email is Robert at training by Dunbar.com. So just email me or text me, and then I will definitely send you the information, the link for that um, for the free chapter. And you guys, as I say things that you guys can relate to, just go in the chat and just keep that 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 chat that chat kind of pumping there. Uh, but I'm gonna I'm go to the next slide because I'm gonna break down a lot of things on the next slide just so you guys will have a better idea. So here I use some examples uh, of like branding yourself. So on the far left, you've got training by Dunbar. You've got me. You've got me pointing at a picture of a guy with a T-shirt on. Now, you can't read the T-shirt in a sign because I have it kind of minimized there so I can fit everything on the page. But on that shirt is my mantra, which is how you think is how you live. And below that mantra is my logo on that shirt that the guy's wearing. So if you see me posting, I posted earlier today, uh, one of my clients, um, a quote where you know he has a studio and his studio was losing a lot of money. And uh, because the studio was losing a lot of money, he ended up using me as a coach and I, and I got him back to about $10,000 a month. So he did a quote for me and I dropped it. I dropped the quote on the, on the photo with my logo on the shirt uh, for the guy and a coffee cup sitting on the stage of the studio with my logo on a coffee table. Why? Because I'm, 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 I'm branding myself. So everybody doesn't brand themselves. But if you look at me as, as training by Dunbar, why did I brand myself as training by Dunbar? Because when I was training, before I had a brand and before I made a name for myself as a trainer, people would always come to my trainings. If there were two or three different trainings, right, um, doing with the same information, people will come to my training and say, hey, I wanted to get to training by you because I like the way you train, right? So when people will come to my trainings and they'll say, hey, the material is the same here as it was there. Right. The training was the same this year as it was last year. But I came to your training because people said that you train differently. So because people were uh, individualizing me as a trainer, as somebody who trained differently, I came up with training by Dunbar because that's what people were buying into my training for. I wasn't at that time. I wasn't putting out information that was that was that I had created. I was training other people's material at that point. So it wasn't the, the content, it was me training, which is why I came up with training by Dunbar. So see, this is me branding myself in my name. If you look at the second example, which is Fantastic Fitness by Nakia. So for those who don't know who Nakia is, Nakia is the wife of Kevin Mack. So it's Nakia Jones Mack. And Nakia Jones is in network marketing, but she also has a Zumba company. Right. So on the personal training fitness Zuma side, she has she has coined herself Fantastic Fitness with Nakia. What is she doing? She's branding herself. That's why her name is in her company name. 
And see, everybody doesn't do that. And there's nothing wrong if you don't do that. But I'm saying when you're branding yourself, you people are buying into you. That means that people are buying what you're selling because they love you. If people don't like you, if you don't want to be public, if you don't want people to know who you are, then brand your company, hide behind your company, and you can still get rich. You can still be successful. It doesn't matter what industry you're in. I'm just, I'm just showing you these examples of, of branding yourself as an individual because you may have a skill set. Your personality may be great. Uh, you may be the kind of person that people like to hear from on stage or in the kids um, situation where she's doing the Zumba and they may like the way she dance or the music that she uses or the rhythm that she has. So she's coined her, her, her company, Fantastic Fitness with Nakia because she wanted it to be about her and her personality and which, what skill set she brings to the table, right? And then to the far right, you see Kyle Sprague, which is Sprague Success. So he has a website called SpragueSuccess.com where he's talking about network marketing and the opportunity of working from home and those different things. Well, guess what? He's branding himself because he could have formed a company and named it and used that, but he wanted to use his name because he wanted to brand himself as saying, hey, I am the leader that you want to work with. You guys follow what I'm saying? Yes to yes? So that's yeah. one type of branding here. We're talking about a person branding themselves. So look at Grant Cardone. Grant Cardone has Grant branded himself as Uncle GC. He has branded himself as, uh, as uh, 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 Grant Cardone Capital. So all of Grant Cardone's things, his name is always involved. You always see Grant Cardone's name on everything that he does. And people are like, oh, he's so egotistical and he's all, he's all about himself. No, it's branding, guys. It's just like Trump. Trump Towers, all these different things. Guys, Trump is branding his name. He's branding himself. That's what he's doing because he he knew that his name was good because his dad was a business owner. So the Trump name was already well known. So he kept going with that. And he said, I'm going to brand these hotels and my real estate deals and everything was Trump, 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 Trump. Some people brand by branding themselves. Some people brand by branding different names. Oreo, Nabisco, right? Uh, Johnson yeah. Johnson. Uh, all of those different companies, those companies are that those, you know, th those aren't people's name. Arm and Hammer isn't somebody's name. So some people brand through a company name and some people, right, brand because it's about people have 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 gotten an attachment to that person. So if you go to a, a, a Darnell Self. If you go to his website, Darnell Self has a, 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 a website where his, his logo is Darnell Self. You know, his, my, his mantra is self-made because of his last name, right? No pun yeah. intended. He's branding himself. Um, I can't think of a lady right, right now. Um, I meant to put her in the slideshow when I ran out of time. But it's a young lady. She's very well known, for, uh, a, fitness, a fitness trainer, a woman. She's been around for 20 some odd years, still in great shape. And I can't think of her name right now. I probably will think of it, but I can't think of it right now. But she's branded herself by her name. It's her first name, her last name, Fitness. She's always been that. So it's okay to brand yourself if you want people to buy into you. Or if you say, no, you know, I'm going to be a gym owner and I'm going to buy into an LA Fitness or I'm going to create Orange Theory, right? You guys seen the gym Orange Theory? That's not somebody's name. That's somebody saying, hey, I'm going to take uh, a name that I like and I'm going to create um, a brand based on that. So if you go to Kyle Sprague's website, he's got a, a video that starts and it says, who is Kyle D. Sprague? Who is Kyle D. Sprague? So remember, when you're, when you're online and you're marketing, if you're a network marketer, it's probably a good idea for you to brand yourself. Because people want to work with you as, as a leader. So if you're having success in network marketing, people want people know you know that you are a ring earner or a millionaire maker or whatever kind of name that you have in network marketing. If people know you as that, then you should brand yourself as that and you should operate as that because that's how you get people to work with you. Because they say, you know what? I know who Kyle is. I know who Bob Frazier is. I know who Melissa is. I know who Barbara Smith is. Oh, she's really successful in a network marketing company. I want to be on her team. See, if Barbara Smith is using another name in that circumstance, they don't necessarily know that that's who that is. So it depends on what you're doing for a living. 
whether you want people to work with you or not. If you just got great company ideas and if you know how to put together great programs for people to join, you may use a regular company name because people are buying into the programs that you have. So me as a coach, when people come to me for, for entrepreneur coaching or for personal development training, they're coming to me because they want my training. So that's why I'm training by Dunbar as opposed to me coming up with another name like I did with my benefits company. So my benefits company is Living Legacy Benefits Group, where I do my will workshops in nonprofit functions. And then I've got Oceanside Benefits Group, which is my benefits company where I sell legal and identity theft benefits. You guys follow? So I didn't name those companies after me because guess what? They're not buying me. They're buying the benefits. The company that lets me in to sell my legal identity theft, they don't care anything about me. I don't sell that any better than anybody else does. They're buying that product. So I named my company Oceanside Benefits because I'm in Florida. And benefits, obviously, because it's a benefits company. Living Legacy Benefits, because I wanted to go into churches and nonprofits and things like that. So Living Legacy is a familiar term in that arena. And then benefits, because I'm offering it as a benefit. You guys follow? So that's why I came up with that name. And I didn't use my name because in those instances, they aren't buying me. So I want you guys to understand that as you move forward and say, I'm going to form my company. I'm going to brand myself. What are you branding? Are you branding yourself as a leader, as a network marketer? Are you branding yourself as an exclusive trainer when you're saying I'm a great nutritionist and I really work well with people that have disabilities? So people know me for that. So I'm going to brand my fitness company on with my name so people know to come here if they have those circumstances. If I just got a great gym set up, then I'm going to name my great gym set up something and then I'm going to open up gyms all over the country and I'm going to let other people run them like a franchise and they're going to buy that name. You guys follow that? So that's 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 the difference between branding myself and branding the deal. You got to know when to brand the deal versus when you're branding yourself. And that's that's kind of what we're talking about here. So those are just three examples of a person branding themselves. I also gave you the, the, uh, the Kevin Mack example. So now when you're branding yourself, this is something that you have to think about. What is your story? What is your story? When you decide that you're going to brand yourself, what you have to understand is that you have to come up with a story and it has to be consistent and it may seem to be mundane. You can change the tonality of your voice. You can do all the things that you want to do to make that story seem more exciting the next time so that you feel better saying it. But you better have a story because nobody's going to buy into you as a brand if you don't have a story that they can follow. So. There's some people that tell some really good stories that when I hear them, I get on I get on the edge of my seat. Whenever I hear Les Brown tell stories, I'm always excited because Les Brown tells really good stories. Jim Rohn always told really good stories, right? Some 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 sales trainers to all, always told really good stories. Donnell Sales tells he tells really good stories. So I really like that when you brand yourself. Once you let people know, hey, look, this is my story, people will fall in love with your story and they will buy into your circumstance and into your services based on them being able to relate to your story. So if you guys know somebody that tells a really good story, right, it doesn't matter what industry it is, just put yes to yes right in the chat box because it's important to know that. So I tell people my story and I say, hey, look, my story is, look, I'm originally from Buffalo, New York, and now I live in Jacksonville, Florida. And I came and I tell my story about um, buying the properties and getting three of them foreclosed on and having a Mercedes Benz and a BMW and one of those being repoed and me hiding one behind the house and me owning a nightclub and me owning a, a, transport, a, a transportation company in Alabama, part owner of that, me owning, um, I, and I was a part owner of most of what I own. I own very few things by myself. Um, I have, I have a young lady that I'm still friends with right now that we still do stuff together. Right. And we've, we've owned three or four different businesses together right now. We don't own anything together, but we're talking about doing some other things together. So like I, I, you know, my Janet King janitorial franchise, I had a business partner in that as well. My tax office, I had a business partner in that as well, but those are all part of my story. And the reason why they're part of my story is because who are you following when you're following that brand? Like for those who are Kim Kardashian fans, right? You're following the Kim Kardashian series with their family and that's their story, guys. That's their story. Think about the people that you follow. 
Think about the people that you follow that you like. What is it that you like about those people? Most of the time, it's their story. Their story has intrigued you one way or another, and then you started following them, and then you kind of you follow their life, right? There's a lot of people who follow Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry has a really good story, right? May not be good for him because he had a lot of different trials and tribulations that happened, but you guys follow. People, you want a real life story that you can follow and say, hey, you know what? I'm screwed up, but I know some other screwed up people as well. So you got to think about that when you're branding yourself. You've got to be transparent. Um, you've got to be the kind of person that people feel like they can trust if you're going to brand you as opposed to branding the company and hiding behind the company name, right? I don't know who owns, I don't know who owns uh, Nabisco, right? I have no idea who owns Nabisco. I know Nabisco owns a lot of brands like Oreo and a lot of other things, but I don't know who owns Nabisco. That person decided that they didn't want to be out there that way, right? For whatever reason, but it still sells. You guys follow? So here, we want you to understand that if, if you're a network marketer, and you're branding yourself, what is your story? You should be t saying your story every time you hit um, the stage. You should be telling parts of your story on your page when you're posting things, right? You should have an image of yourself and then put be putting in there parts of your story. I remember when. How many people can attest to when this happened to them? Like, you have to say those kinds, of, and that's what creates your following, whether it be Instagram, whether it be Twitter, whether it be TikTok, whether it be um, Facebook or you just having a website that's getting a bunch of hits. So you've got to remember people want to follow your story and they want to see your story evolve, right? They want to see your story evolve. So, you know, like Sharanda Ivy, good friend of mine. So for those who don't know who Sharanda Ivy is, doesn't matter if you don't know who she is, but for those who know who Sharanda Ivy is, like I call Sharanda Ivy my bestie. And um, me and her, are, we're pretty tight. But a lot of people follow Sharanda because they watch Sharanda go from hey, I want to do CDLP to a field trainer, to a certification trainer, to a person holding an accountability card, to a person that's about to get a 50K ring. They're watching her story evolve. And when people watch her story evolve, they become quote unquote fans, not the kind of fan that Michael Jackson have, right? But the kind of fan just, they, they like your story, they like your branding, they like how you move, and they like being mentored by you, so to speak. And you've got to brand yourself that way, especially if you're in network marketing. If you're a trainer, nah, yes and no. It depends on how, you, how, you, how you're trying to brand. If you got a special skill set as a trainer, if you're a really great nutritionist, if you're known for helping people lose weight, if you're known for uh, helping people um, uh, go vegan or, uh, you know, wh whatever, you know, they, they, my upper body or I, I'm, I'm a great, I, I do good with helping people with abs or helping somebody with legs or helping girls with glutes or whatever your deal is. If that's what you're known for, then yes, you should be branding yourself. If you're just known as the person that could put together a great program and a great system and a great gym, then you should be branding yourself. As an author, it can go both ways. You can brand yourself as an author. Or you could be a ghost, not necessarily, I'm saying a ghost writer, but that's a little bit different. You can be an author that uses a name that's not really your name. And you can operate that way, right? And just have your pen name. And people don't actually know who your real name is because you may not be interested in people knowing who you are, but they're still following your material. You guys follow me? So yeah. what is what is what is your story? And if you're branding yourself, you better come up with a story quick. And, and so that people can, can 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 continue to follow you and grow with you. And as you build, you'll find out that things will work uh, a, a lot better kind of uh, in your behalf. Right. So here we're talking just a little bit more about things like logos and fonts and, 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 and textures, which would be brushed metal and color palettes and patterns, right? Because these are things that sometimes people brand in that way. So if you're saying, hey, I don't want to necessarily brand myself, but I want to brand a thing. I want people to know, you know, my, you know, this, this thing that I do. So you, you've got to like, for instance, I was, I was given the name from, uh, from a young lady named Teresa unplugged. So a lot of times I use that term unplugged. And whenever there was a training going on and I would put unplugged, people knew automatically who was teaching that training because I would use the term unplugged. So at that point, it was really more or less just like, like a line, or I guess you could say a mantra I was using, however you want to term it. But when I put CDLP certification training unplugged, people knew it was me. 
just because I put unplugged it. Even if I wasn't on a flyer, they knew it was me because they knew that I used that term. We all know when we see an Apple product, right? We all know that. We know when we see an Apple product. We know when we see that brushed metal the Apple product. We know what the, we know that look, right? We know specific fonts. Like, look at the, the logo on uh, the Louis Vuitton uh, uh, case there, uh, right? So if you see that LB anywhere, you know that font. You know exactly what that is. They branded that font. They branded, I would say they branded the color they have, but you know, Louis Vuitton comes in the rainbow, Louis Vuitton and other things like that. So they do have other colors, but that's their palette color that they use. And when you see that color, you know that that's Louis, you know that that's uh, uh, Louis Vuitton. So patterns, color palette, palettes, brush metal, those are all things that you have to keep in mind when you make your logo. So if you look at uh, on the bottom of the screen, left screen, my logo, right? This is my logo. Well, if you see in the background of my logo, it's got ethics back there. It's got some other terms that deal with uh, being um, uh, having integrity written in little words all in the back of the logo. Every now and then somebody realizes that and they let me know. But over time, people will, will, will notice that about that logo. And when they see it, they're going to know that it's my logo because they're going to see the word ethics. Right. They're going to see the word integrity in there. Right. And then people, people are going to know these are my colors. Right. This blue, this gold. Right. This mix between uh, purple and blue that I have in here. I have those are all on my color palette. So when I'm creating a flyer when I'm creating anything, I always have those colors already in my color palette. And I use those colors over and over again. It's psychological. So you're branding yourself online. If you're branding yourself online as a network marketer, as a personal a, a fitness trainer, as a realtor, you got to remember, have your logo, have it set up however you set your your, your things up, right? Your, your, however you, whatever your structure is, and you have to constantly have that in there. You won't see a flyer come out that I don't have training by Dunbar. You're going to see my logo on every flyer that I put out because I'm trying to make that name a household name. You guys follow that? Yes or yes? So I'm going to put that there. You've got to do the same thing yourself. You've got, you've got to do the same thing yourself. You've got to, as an individual, you've got to say, okay, I'm branding myself now. Now that I'm branding myself, I have to make sure that as a brander, right, I'm branding myself in a way that people will always know that this is me before I get there. So you guys just want to make sure that you're doing that. So as as we move forward, and let me let me hold on. I gotta get some of this stuff off the screen. Cause I got stuff on my screen that y'all can't see. So which is which is making me not be able to see. So what I want to look at is like the tonal and give you guys some example of how those things will work for you on your behalf. Uh, so that you, you guys can follow. So now photography and animation, guys, that's going to be more or less for fitness trainers and for realtors. If you're a network marketer, photography and animation is not going to be so much. Photography is just going to be photography. Like just get some good, clean, professional pictures. If you know how to take professional pictures with your iPhone or Android, do it that way. They, they've got background burners you can use to make them look more professional. If you want to hire a photographer, you go ahead and do that. But you should get you a good selection of pictures. You should have three, four hundred shots of yourself in different poses, right? And you can build that up. I'm not saying go do a photo shoot with 300 shots at one time. You should be building that up. You should have pictures in regular clothes, pictures in business clothes, pictures, uh, hang, uh, you know, kind of relaxing with your family. Uh, things like that. Pictures of you on the computer. Pictures of you drinking coffee. If you drink coffee, if you drink, you know, if you're a bottle of water drinker, Gatorade drinker, whatever it is you drink, you should have pictures doing those different things. And then you've got voice branding. So let me give you an example. What I mean by voice brand. I talked about Kevin Mack earlier. Most people know Kevin Mack's voice. If if a training was on and it was Kevin Mack, you would know that that was Kevin Mack without even having to look at the screen. There's certain people that their voice is so distinguished that I know that it's them. Whenever I hear Kevin Hart, I know that it's Kevin Hart. For that matter, whenever I hear Darnell Self, I know it's Darnell Self. When I hear Grant Cardone, I know that it's Grant Cardone. When I hear Jim Rohn, I know it's Jim Rohn. When I hear Les Brown, I know it's, uh, it's, it's, it's Les Brown. So those people have voice branding, and it's not even because they're trying to. It's just because they're so well-known. Right? We all know who is an actor that we all know when we hear their voice. 
right? Put some actors there that you guys know. When you hear their voice, you don't even have to be in front of a television. You hear their voice and you know that it's them. That's voice branding. Put some actors there. I'll go first. Samuel L. Jackson. I don't have to see the I don't have to see the television when he's on. I know that it's him. I know that it's him. Sean Connery, absolutely. Denzel, absolutely. Hill Harper, right? James Earl Jones, right? Y'all know when y'all hear that. Um, I think it's, I think it's the, the, the Wendy's commercial. James Earl does now. I think it's I believe it's Wendy's, uh, one of those uh, uh, you know hamburger places. Um, you know you 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 hear James Earl, you know it's him, right? The guy from the um, Allstate commercial with the deep voice. Arnold Schwarzenegger, right? These are all Rambo, uh, still Sylvester Stallone. These are this is voice branding, guys. Right? Do you know how many roles Arnold Schwarzenegger got because of his voice? You guys follow where I'm coming from with this? Yes. Like Arnold Schwarzenegger literally got movie roles because of his voice. Because of his voice. So branding is, is all around. And that's why you have to be sure, like when you're doing things, like how are you branding yourself? Why are you going to get gigs if that's what you're doing? If you're a team building in a network marketing company, how do you get people to join your team? How do you do that? How do you get people to join your team? Is it because you're branding yourself? Have they fallen in love with your logo? Is it your mantra, your catchphrase, right? My, 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 um, my, one of my mentors in network marketing, Mike Humes, right? Right. It's impossible to stop a man or woman that will not quit. Right? One of his mantras. What else? What do they call him? Male, male man, the millionaire. You see what I mean? Just those terms right there. So it's like people will, will promote him based on those terms. So how are you branded? And what are you branding yourself for? You have to think about that before you go online just spouting stuff out. I mean, I'm watching people on their business page talk about the debate and talk about Biden and talk about Trump. And it's like, you can't brand yourself and you having conversations about politics on your business page. Because guess what? Whoever you like, you just lost half of the country. You see what I mean? It doesn't matter who you like. You lost half the country because that's what religion and politics and all of that stuff does. Half the people don't like you no more because they don't agree with you. So when you're branding yourself, you got to keep those things in mind. Keep your brand clean. Make sure that you're branding based on what it is that you're looking to do, whether it be, and, I, and I'm saying real estate uh, training or personal fitness training or network marketing because I know that's who's on the line here, right? So right. personality and style, I talked about this a little bit earlier. Right. An example, Bertram Calhoun to Kevin Mack. Right. Fire and ice. It's based on their personality. They're branded based on their personality. Do you know how many movie roles that Kevin Hart got based on his personality and style? That's why he got those roles. How many roles did Denzel Washington get? Now, look, we know Denzel Washington is a great actor, but we also know that people love his personality. Denzel Washington makes the same faces in every movie, right? We know his personality. We know his style. Arnold Schwarzenegger says the same thing. And he can have a be working in a totally different movie. He still says some of the same lines because people like his voice and they like his style and they like his personality. So we don't need you to be all of these things and do all of these things, but we need you to pick and choose what things you're going to do when you're when you're setting yourself up online so that you can brand yourself properly to really get the business that you're you're, you're trying to get and sometimes you can brand yourself without it actually being right a picture of you so let me go somewhere real quick if i can if i may if i'll mess this up you guys see facebook right now No. No? Okay. So I messed something up. Hold on. No, no. Nope. All right. So that means that that means that that means I did something wrong. Hold on. That's what that means. Gotta hit the share screen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I gotta do that, right? 
You're right. You you absolutely right too. Absolutely. If I want you to see my screen, I gotta hit share screen. You guys see Facebook? Yes, sir. All, All right. right. So, Good now. So here, a post I did today. You see this post? Okay, I'm not on this post, but I'm still I'm still promoting training by Dunbar, right? So I got the quote from my client. I've got a picture on his shirt with a couple holding up my logo, and I've got my logo on the bottom left-hand corner, right? So I'm promoting training by Dunbar, and I got this quote from Jared talking about why he used me and how I was able to help him. This is still me promoting myself. I don't have to be the person in the picture to promote myself. I could put somebody else in the picture and just put my logo in there, right? Even down to the coffee cup on the stage that has becoming an entrepreneur on there and training by Dunbar. It's all psychological, right? But what am I promoting here? My studio business slowed down during the pandemic, so I decided to call a business coach. Training by Dunbar got my business back to 10000 a month with a six-month uh, entrepreneurial coaching program. I never thought I would need a business coach because I'm experienced, but I didn't predict this pandemic. Thanks, Mr. Dunbar, right? So this is, this is me indirectly, right? We talked about last week, indirectly marketing. So let's say that you're a network marketer and you've got somebody on your team and you say, hey, look, can you do a testimony? You've been working with me. When you met me, you had a full time job. You were making sixty thousand dollars a year. Now you're making one hundred thousand dollars a year in a network marketing company. And I've been I've been more working with you. Could you get can you write a quick a testimonial about how you've been able to be successful in network marketing based on working with me? Right. And then I can take that quote and drop it on a picture of right that person or whoever it is I'm going to use in the picture. I don't have to put myself there and I can say, hey, I'm, I, you know, I, I was I was uh, an employee for 30 plus years making $60,000 a year and I'm going to make $100,000 a year in a network marketing company. Uh, I've been working with a fantastic mentor, blah, 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 blah. Like, you know, and, and then that that's me indirectly marketing that I'm a leader in network marketing and I can help you make money from home. You guys follow that? I don't have to say join my company. I don't have to say buy my legal program. I don't have to say buy my juice or my face mask or whatever it is I sell. Whatever whatever company you in, right? If you're in network marketing, the key is always recruiting. You're building a team, right? In network in, in network marketing, so to speak, right? The most for the most part of network marketing, you're looking to build an organization by recruiting. So how do you get people to want to join your team? Because part of being in a successful network marketing company, so you join that industry, I want to join network marketing. When I want to get in there, how do I pick and choose what company is going to help me be successful? I got to choose a company that's a good company. I got to get on a team that's a good team. And then I've got to be willing to be coachable. You guys follow that? So if I'm coachable and it's a good team and it's a good company, those things, line, those things lined up, I'm probably going to do well in network marketing. That's probably what's going to happen. So if I say, hey, I work with this company, right? I'm in I'm, I'm in a great position with this company. I'm earning six figures a year. I'm working with this great mentor by the name of Mr. Frazier, by the name of uh, 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 Mrs. Um, uh, uh, Smith, right? But now that person is promoting you as the mentor they're working with. They've already said they're working with a good company. Now all we need is the person that decides to buy into that to be coachable. Because two of the three things you need in line are done based on your advertising. You guys follow that? But I don't yeah. have to still join my company. Sometimes the testimonial will say that it, it'll 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 say that it'll say that for you, right? So here, right, we'll workshop that we're gonna be doing. Right. So what, what, what are we doing? We got a truck, a, a, a female trucking organization. Right. Me and this young lady are going to get together on, on tomorrow and do a presentation, a wheel work workshop specifically for CDL drivers. Right. So like if you guys have seen my training that I've done live where I talk about indirect marketing and I talk about um, workshopping people. So if you go to my website, there's an area on my website where it says services where I talk about workshopping people. 
because everybody wants to sell. I'm not going to go knock on doors and go to trucking companies and the only thing I do is just sell. Right? That's one way of doing it, knocking on doors. I can walk to community and say, hey, my name is Robert Dunbar. I work with Legal Shield. I'm coming here to see whether or not somebody has came and talked to you guys about your safety score. I pulled your safety numbers and it seemed like you, you guys are having some issues and I want to be here to help you. I can knock on doors and do that all day. Down. That's one way of making sales. My other way is I do workshops. I do free workshops. And when I do the free workshops for, this, for the commercial drivers on wheel workshop, on, 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 excuse me, on getting estate planning and wheels done, I'm going to draw business out of that. I don't have to go in and throw a dagger at them. I go in there and give them a free workshop and then they'll call afterwards and say, hey, look, I saw the information. I'm interested in getting my state, my state plan done. You guys got that? That's a way of indirect marketing. But you, what do you see here? Right? What do you see in that backdrop? Training by Dunbar. Right behind my head. It's still in the flyer. Right? It's still in the flyer. So I'm always going to make sure that I'm promoting my company when I'm doing these different things. Right? So look at this flyer. Your life challenges are your story. So what did I just talk about? What's your story? Your life challenges are your story. What's your story? Your real story. Right. So in this post that I did, I gave a kind of a pretty long post on some things. But I talked about some real life things that have happened with me. Right. Hurt relationships, child support, not seeing my youngest son for years, three failed businesses, two, three or four closures, two car repossessions, a lawsuit against me, financial challenges, a stress ulcer uh, that caused internal bleeding. And then my current medical condition being that I'm, I'm, I'm currently having a medical condition now. Why did I put that there? Not for sympathy, not for empathy, not because I want somebody to feel sorry for me. Like everybody has challenges. The thing is, it's, it's my story. You guys follow that? It's my story. And when people are following you, they want to know, right? You screwed up two for one. Two, they want to know, they want to, people like to hear your story. Because what are you following if all, if all I'm doing is posting how great my business is doing? People don't want to hear that all day long. I'm doing great. I'm doing, you know what I mean? My business is doing good. My life is good. Everybody loves me. Nobody wants to hear that. People want real life. People know that you're dealing with real life. So I made this post because of that. And what did I do in, in, in the photo? I took three different pictures of me, right? These two pictures back here and here, I took pictures of me at with a crutch because when I first started going back to the gym after the injury, I, was, I had a crutch. Well, in this picture, I don't have a crutch anymore. I'm still taking my crutch to the gym, but I'm not walking around with it anymore because my leg is starting to get stronger. But it's me showing progress throughout the situation. So I dropped those three pictures at the gym. And what's here again, guys? My logo. See my logo? Remember I said about font and color? Look, the gold from my logo, here. The navy blue from my logo, the navy blue on the border, in the lettering. The white backdrop in the lettering. I made this flyer, but I put my colors, my color palette in here to match my logo. So it's all psychological. It's all psychological. And people will say, hey, so tell me a little bit more about what you do. I picked up a fitness training client from this post. Right? It was only one. But guess what? It took me 15 minutes, 20 minutes to put this flyer together. Probably another 10 minutes to post it. So I did 25 minutes of work and I picked up a client. So at the end of the day, the person, I didn't have to sell that person anything. I mentioned nothing in here about selling anything. I didn't even say I was a trainer in here. But the post led somebody to come to me as a customer. You guys follow that? Yes. All right. so, so, and and this is and this I'm, and I'm just I'm just I'm just showing you guys these things because I want you to see the you know the 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 in the indirect marketing so that you guys understand you don't have to shove yourself, your product, your service, your leadership, you being a strong mentor and building a strong network marketing company. You don't have to shove that down people's throat. You have to indirectly market. You just have to market consistently, right? What am I marketing here? I'm marketing Kim Antsy, a character I made up in the book, right? So what am I doing here? I'm not, I'm, I've got training by Dunbar on this shirt, training by Dunbar on this shirt. My name is here, but in this chapter, I'm promoting Kim Antsy as a character and hoping that you all fall in love with Kim Antsy and love that chapter. So guess what I can do? I can bring her up again in my next book.
and people will buy the next book just to hear the two or three chapters that, that Kim Antsy is in. That's how it works. Even though it's a fictitious character, people will follow her story. So I, I just need you guys to understand that that's all part of brand. So it's a different level of branding. Branding is not just about creating a logo and throwing it around all over the place. Because you may have a cute logo and people keep saying it's cute, but you won't get no business from it. Does that make sense? All right, guys, it's 10 o'clock. Um, not only is it um, 10 o'clock, but it's the last day of the month. I know some of y'all got uh, some of y'all upline, probably calling y'all, <laughs> asking y'all why y'all on this train with me. <laughs> so I'm going to stop sharing my screen here. Um, because, again, I don't want to uh, give you guys so much that it's like, oh, my head is blown off. I don't understand all this stuff. I want you guys to get this a little better time, guys. Like, um, you got to trust the process. This is not an overnight deal, guys. This is about y'all taking this stuff a little bit at a time because this is all about being an entrepreneur. Like, you cannot run a successful business. I don't care what kind of business it is. You can earn enough money in network marketing to retire your spouse, retire yourself, and leave residual income to your kids and your grandkids but not if you don't run it like a business. And you can't expect your network marketing company. You can't expect LA Fitness. You can't expect um, Watson Realty to, to teach you to be an entrepreneur. They're going to show you the tricks in the trade of, of real estate. Network marketing is going to show you how to do three-way calls, right? How to sell the product, how to recruit people, how to follow the system. That's what they're supposed to be teaching you because that's what their system is in place for, right? So when you go to college to learn to be a doctor, that's what they teach you. They don't teach you. There ain't no side class on being an attorney because that's not what you're in school for. You're in school to be a doctor. They teach you how to be a doctor. You've got to know that that's all you're going to get there. You've got to get your information on being an entrepreneur from somewhere else because you're not going to get that from Legal Shield, and you shouldn't expect it from Legal Shield. You're not going to get it from some other network marketing company because you shouldn't expect it there. That's not their job to teach you that. Their job is to teach you how to be good at that thing that, that you're a part of with them. LA Fitness is going to teach you how to be a great personal trainer. They're not going to show you how to be their competition. You think LA Fitness is going to show you how to open up your own gym? So you take their customers, no, they're not going to do that. They're going to say, be a great personal trainer. We're going to charge that client $270 a month, and we're going to give you 70 bucks. That's how that works. They're training you to be an employee. They're not training you to open up your own business. You've got to go seek that training out yourself so that you can be the best that you can be. And when you when you decide you're going to branch out on your own, you've got to brand yourself to get business. And your brand has got to be consistent. It can't look good, but then the customer service be horrible, which is a whole other training. So if your flyers are if your flyers and your design work is A plus, then your customer service and your product and services should be too. So you got to keep that stuff in mind as you're building, building that deal. And you got to remember, if you're going to brand yourself, you better be transparent. You better be transparent. Because if you're not transparent, it gives people a chance to come in and expose you. People can't expose what's already been exposed. So for those that know me, like about, I guess maybe it was a month ago, maybe three weeks ago or something like that, somebody went into my Facebook account and it was, it was just this whole deal going on. So all that know that happened, y'all know what I'm talking about. Two days later, I went up there and I put a post and I'm like, this is why I'm transparent because this happened. But guess what? Everybody knows me already. So you can't say nothing about if you say something about me, either it's going to be true and people are going to know it already or it's going to be false and people are going to know it's a lie because they know I'm transparent. You guys follow what I'm saying? That's why it's always best to be transparent and honest because at the end of the day, nobody can't lie on you. And when they tell the truth on you, guess what happens when they tell the truth on you? People already know. People already know. So you can't, you know, you can't, you, you can't lie about somebody who's open, who's transparent. You just can't. And that's the great thing about being transparent. So if you're going to brand yourself, be transparent. If you're not going to brand yourself, then, you know, you handle your deal how you handle your deal. Because that's, that's, that's on you. Nobody really knows who you are. But people will get your information out there and it's like, no. He was like, hey, man, you good? I'm like, no, nah, I'm good. I don't care nothing about nothing, nothing like that. I don't care. I just, it, it didn't bother me. Because I know who I am and the people know, people that know me know that if you come to me and ask me a question about something, hey, Dunbar, if I did it, I'm going to tell you I did it. Because if I was embarrassed about it, I wouldn't have done it in the first place. 
You see what I mean? If I thought it getting out was going to be an embarrassment, I would have never done it. So when I, whatever I do in the dark, I expect that at some point it's going to come out to the light. So because I think that way, whenever something comes out, it's like, oh, did you know this happened? It's like when I went and got, when I was out of commission and got dental surgery and all my stuff done and people was like, oh, yeah, so I heard you had this. And I'm like, you ain't have to hear that. You could ask me that. There ain't no secret. Why are you coming to me like I'm like don't nobody know? Like if you ask me, I'll tell you. Like I like I don't care nothing about nobody knowing I got dental surgery. Why why you think that's a secret? That ain't no secret. I, I didn't walk around telling people because I'm not gonna walk around telling people, just telling people that. But if they ask me, I told them. Some people thought that I shouldn't have told them. You shouldn't tell people. Who cares? Right? It's it's, it's surgery, it's dental surgery. I, if I was if I was embarrassed to get it, I wouldn't have got it. Right? I didn't get it because there was something wrong with my mouth. I got it because that's what I wanted to do. So, right? You know what I mean? So, women out there, you go get your body done. Quit getting your body done and lying about it. If you got your body done and you paid for it, then you got your body done. Don't be lying about it. That's your body. If you want to have somebody do your body the way you wanted it to look, you can pay for it and go get it and pay for it. Now, can't nobody tell no stories behind your back. Guess why? Because people know. And that's what they're gonna say. You ain't got that, you don't gotta be sneaking around. Just ask her. Just ask them. They'll tell you because they're transparent. Right? So if you guys got any questions, let's go ahead and do it. If you guys need to drop off and close off your month before it's one o'clock in the morning, if you oh, I don't know what whatever part of the country you in, because I know the people on the West Coast, you, you your, your time about up. Or no, actually, you got what? It's yeah, only no. it's seven o'clock for you. Y'all got about what how many more hours? Uh, let's see here. Oh, y'all well, still only got the same amount of hours. Y'all still only got about, about, about three hours. Yeah, about three. Yeah, y'all got about three hours. Get it in if you got something to get in. Okay. All right, so anybody any questions? Going once. Going twice. So. Mr. Dunbar. Yes, what's up? Burns, how are you, sir? I'm doing excellent. That's good to hear. Um, so I have my issue is um as a network marketer mm -hmm. i have never owned a trend a traditional business mm -hmm. however i would like to brand myself i just don't know what mm -hmm. route to take uh -huh. so what would you suggest for someone who's never been in business before other than network marketing in That's order to branch it a uh, branch out brand I would say that you have to brand yourself based on what it is you do. Like, what about you in network marketing makes you successful? Like, what 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 is the draw to you? And that's what you that's what you have to look at. What is what is the draw to you? So, uh, um, if you unmute yourself back, unmute yourself so we can talk. Okay, so my my draw is I'm very open. I, I'm very honest, and I feel that I. I operate in integrity above anything else. And so if I don't feel comfortable with something, I normally will not try to pursue something that I feel goes against my better judgment. And so that's that's one of the issues that, I won't say it's, it's a, an issue, but that's one of the things that I struggle with because I know branding really is about the story that you want someone else to have of you similar to like an alter ego. And that's what I'm I'm looking to really get a hold of. If that okay. makes sense. So you've got to know what you're passionate about. You got to spend some time figuring out what you're passionate about, what you do well, um, what, draw, what, what attracts people to you, why the people that are on your team like working with you, don't, once you realize what those things are, and people will tell you, sometimes you have to ask people. You really have to ask them. Um, like you really have to, I really have to pick up the phone and say, hey, um, Ms. Lindell, I got a question for you. Like you've been on my team for three years and you seem to like being on my team. You're on all the calls and you know you seem to like enjoy working with my leadership. Like if you don't mind, I'm trying to position myself to start branding myself. Like what would you say are good qualities and bad qualities about me? You literally have to make those phone calls. And it could be family, it can be business partners, it can be just friends that you know. But try to ask honest people that's not going to lie to you because they want to make you feel good. And get those answers on who you are and then brand yourself based on that. Because guess what? It doesn't matter who you are and what you do. 
people are going to certain there's going to be a it's going to be a sect of people that's going to like you like think about all of the great people that you know people like them because they're great and then all of the knuckleheads that still got to follow think about the knuckleheads that got to follow think about the people who just like that like that curse with no um with, with no avail that still have a following think about the people who have a clean talking game that still have a following you see what i mean so it doesn't matter what you do, whether you don't curse, whether you do curse, whether you're an atheist, whether you're a Christian, whether you're a Baptist, there's going to be a group of people who are still going to like you. So the best thing to do is to be yourself. Know who that self is and brand yourself based on that. Because you you only want to draw the people in who are, who are really going to like you for you. So that's why I never understood and I know that this sounds ridiculous to say, but this is why I don't understand. You guys have heard me say this jokingly in my live trainings and stuff. Why people get into a relationship and they lie for six months about who they are. Why are you lying? Because when you start acting like yourself, they're going to leave. Like, it doesn't even make, like, you can't fake forever. So if you like somebody enough that you think you're going to marry them, why would you lie about who you are if you think you're going to marry You don't think that they're going to find out who you are and you're marrying them? Like how long are you gonna do that facade? You only can do it for so long. And once you once it's over with, either they're gonna leave or y'all gonna be miserable because they're not gonna want to be there no more, but they're gonna still be there. Which is just as uncomfortable as going through a divorce in the first place. You follow what I'm saying? So you want the people around you who you attract being yourself. And the people who like, oh, I don't like her. Let them not like you and go go deal with who they like. Because you want your you're, you're following the people who buy into your brand to be true, loyal followers. to it. So it's a guy, I can't think of the guy's name no more. It's a guy on YouTube, and he talks about this all the time. You can get rich off a, t off a thousand true fans. If you, got a th if you got a true following of a thousand people, you can be successful. So why can't anybody be successful when there's 330 million people just here? And when you're talking about digital stuff, when you're talking about online, when you're talking about whether you're a personal trainer, a real now a realtor a little bit different because you gotta have licenses in different places, but a personal trainer or a network marketer or an author or any of those above, you can sell all over the world. So you don't got 330 million people. You got a billion people sometimes. You only need a thousand true fans in order for you to be successful. So you don't need everybody to like you. You just need a thousand people to like you a lot. Does that make sense? It's like dating, right? You want to get married? You only need one person to love you that's not enough to marry you. You're only going to have one spouse. All of these people in the world, right? You only need one person to love you enough to marry you. Just one. That's all you need. So it's not really about big numbers. It's about if you just yourself, you're not going to tell me that you can't be yourself and somebody not fall in love with you. Somebody not be a fan. Somebody not be a follower. You just got to brand yourself based on who you are. And nobody knows that better than you do. But sometimes you got to decipher your strong and weak points by asking people who, who you know, how they feel about you. And you got to write those things down and say, OK, a lot of my people that are working with me are all saying this. Right. So because they're all saying this, that seems to be a strong point that's attracting people to me. So then you go with that part of your personality and you brand yourself on that part of your personality, because that's what seems to be the most um, likable about yourself. And then you you you, you do that. that. That's what you brand. And then you'll get more followers that way. And people will buy into you that way. And people will sell you without even attempting to sell you that way. Does that make sense? It does. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Absolutely. Anybody else? Go on once. Go on twice. All right. Thank you, Mr. Dunbar. All right, brother. How are you? Good to Good. see you, man. Yeah. All right. That's all I wanted to tell you. Thanks for that. I needed that because um, I was like saying some content like on Instagram or something, how to, you know, approach it and you covered it. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Just be yourself, man. And when people don't buy into it in the beginning, don't change it. Give people a chance. Yeah. Sometimes right. people watch you from, it's like right now, right? So it's like, it's, it's 19 people in here, but nobody's asking any questions. It's only a few things going on in the chat box, but guess what's happening? They still here. The 19 right. people still here, they ain't left. So if they yeah. ain't leave, they must be, they like something or they would have left. You, you guys follow what I'm saying? You gotta look at, the raw, look at the real numbers and stuff. Sometimes yeah. people don't want to chat. Sometimes people doing something else. Sometimes there's kids in the background, they don't say nothing. 
You know what I mean? It's a thousand reasons why people don't necessarily say, hey, I see you, but they're watching you still. So when you're posting on Facebook and you're posting certain things, just because people aren't liking your posts, just because mm -hmm. people aren't inboxing you when you post something, that doesn't mean that they're not looking at what you're doing. That doesn't right. mean that you're not following.